is Albert Mugo. I'm the managing director and CEO, Kenya Electricity Generating Company, or short Kenjin. The reason we've been focusing on geothermal is the fact that geothermal is the least cost source of electricity in Kenya today. It's also a sustainable energy, which is renewable. And uh, we have got great potential because it's also a natural resource. It's available in Kenya in big quantities. The current installed capacity for geothermal in Kenya today is 609, roughly. So you can see the percentage is quite small. However, in terms of what geothermal generates to the grid for consumption, geothermal is contributing about 48%. Uh, and that is because it runs all the time. Once you start the geothermal unit, you don't shut it down unless you're doing maintenance. Most of these other sources of energy, you use them for less hours than what you use for geothermal. Uh, in terms of focus, uh, for, forecast going forward, we estimate that uh, in the next four or so years, uh, we will be having an additional over 1,600 megawatts of geothermal as a country. In that, Kenjin expects to add about 500 megawatts of geothermal and other players such as the private companies will be adding the balance of that to make about 1,600. We just completed a 280 megawatt project in 2014, uh, which we had started construction in 2012 and in 2014 we completed the 280 megawatts. Uh, the plans we have now, we already advertised some last week, uh, 140 megawatts power plant, our next power plant, which is Okaria 5. We are also preparing tenders now for another 70 megawatts uh, power plant. And another 140 megawatts of Okaria 6 is being prepared for us to do it jointly with private sector in a joint venture and that's therefore why I said in terms of our projection we expect to put in about 500 megawatts in the next three to four years as Kenjin. One of the reasons the nation is focusing on geothermal is because geothermal is able to provide uh, the cheapest mode of generation for electricity. Let me give an example. We generate geothermal energy today at about seven to eight US cents per kilowatt hour. The same kilowatt hour, if you are generating that from heavy fuel oil, firing diesel power plants, you would be generating at about 20 US cents per kilowatt hour. So what it means then, as we add more geothermal, uh, we are creating a lowering of the tariffs that the end user will be paying because Edu developed that power from heavy fuel oil or diesel plant, then they would be paying close to two and a half times to three times what they are paying from Jethamo. The well -aid technology fits into our strategy in this sense. Uh, when you're developing geothermal, uh, you drill down to about three kilometers to get the steam that you need. And typically for, let's say, 100 megawatts, you need up to close, uh, you need about 20 wells because each well will be an average, on average about five, five megawatts. Now it takes a minimum of about three to four years to drill those wells. And then you take another three to four years to build a power plant. So in total, we are talking of about eight years. Now, what we are doing with the wellhead technology is that after we've drilled the wells, and while we wait to connect the main power plant, we can get small units which we put next to the well and it can generate power instead of that well lying idle all that time. So in other words, the advantage is being able to utilize the resource earlier and of course making some returns from the investment which we have put in drilling the wells. Currently, we actually have installed about uh, 10 wellhead units generating about 50 megawatts and we also have another five which are quite advanced in terms of construction 
and by the end of the year, we'll be adding another 25 megawatts to the grid from the wellheads. And in addition to that, we see ourselves getting more wellheads because we have got some wells still which are not connected and we'll be connecting more wellheads so that uh, in the next two to three years, we see ourselves having more than 50 megawatts of another additional to the ones we are already constructing right now. The kind of partnership we're looking at with the private sector is this, that uh, we as Kenjin have drilled the wells and we are looking for partners to bring in capital to develop the power plants because the, the development of the power plants is quite capital, capital intensive. For example, uh, to develop uh, 140 megawatts of geothermal, you need close to 500 million US dollars, including the drilling. And that's quite a lot of money. So having put in money in drilling, uh, we are needing partners then to put in some money in developing the power plant. So the joint venture is supposed to help us create a special purpose vehicle, a project company, so to speak, which will then look for funding in terms of debt and investors bringing in some equity. And for Kenjin, we will be contributing uh, towards the equity in terms of properly the wells that we have drilled or even adding some money so that we can increase our shareholding in that private company that we are developing as a joint venture. Currently, Kenjin uh, is the first company to connect wind power to the grid. We connected five megawatts in 2009. And in 2012, in 2014, we added another 20 megawatts. And so in total, currently, we are generating 25 megawatts from wind at the Gong Hills. We plan to add another 10 megawatts of wind in Gong Hills in the next two years or so. But in addition to that, we have big plans for bigger weed farms. And in Meru, we have already conducted a visibility study for about 400 megawatts of wind. But because we can't do it at a go, we've planned to do it in phases. And the first phase is going to see us bring into the grid about 80 megawatts. We've already talked to some development financial institutions who have committed up to about 120 million euro. And what we're doing now is preparing for the project, doing the environmental and social impact assessment study. And we see that project starting construction sometime by mid next year. And so in the next two or so years, we will have the 80 megawatts already coming in. As for the other phases of the 400 megawatts, uh, that could come in in about five years, depending on uh, the capacity of the grid to take in the wind, because the other people as well who are developing wind, and wind is limited in terms of how much you can pump in into the grid. For example, if you go to an area like where we're going to Meru, which is uh, an area where people keep animals, uh, you find that you can still continue doing your activities, even, even though the wind is being generated. Secondly, we are talking to the community in terms of the cooperation that we can have with them. Uh, either they are leasing the land to us instead of that land lying idle, because in many cases you find that land is not being utilized. So if we can convince them by allowing us to have the wheat plants there and giving them money on either monthly or yearly basis, it's, it, it's more beneficial than keeping the land idle and saying this is my land, I don't want you to come in here. So the 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 thing is to really work with the communities and the county government so that they see it as a cooperation instead of seeing like they're being exploited by the developers who are coming to develop the wind. Obviously the, the, the country is growing in terms of the economic development and the government is a target of this nation becoming a middle income nation by 2030. What that means is the demand for power will rise at levels that we, as Kenjin, with our resources, cannot meet uh, the demand, even if we wanted to. And that is why you will see private developers coming uh, in the field to also develop some of the power plants. And certainly that is why the government is encouraging uh, private individuals in their homes or in institutions, if they can install like solar energy or even wind energy, they can use it for their uh, for their installations and whatever is the balance that they do not need they can feed it to the grid so it's like having many people coming together to try to meet
the country demand which we see as growing very rapidly. The status of the industrial park currently is that we are carrying out a visibility study because what we needed to do was to bring a consultant, somebody who is well versed with the development of industrial parks around the world. So he has been, we engaged a consultant about a month and a half ago. He has been to site to tour this area and to survey it. And by looking at the terrain, by looking at the kind of the infrastructure that we have, we're expecting him to come up with a blueprint and to also be able to position to say, this is where we think this type of industries can be positioned. So we are expecting that by the end of um, the first quarter next year, that visibility study will be ready. And then on the basis of that, we'll be engaging, or we're already engaging with the Ministry of Industrialization and uh, Enterprise Development in terms of seeing how to create awareness of investors who may want to come to Kenya to develop these industries in the industry park. Well, the next big thing for us is Ocaria 5, 140 megawatts geothermal plant that we've already gotten financing from the Japanese government. And as a matter of fact, uh, we advertised the pre-qualification of contractors last week on, 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 on Thursday. And so we've already started the process of uh, procuring a contractor. And we expect that by mid next year, we should be breaking ground for that project to start. So. Uh, by 2017, once at the end of 2017, we will be commissioning that plant. We are meeting our contracted capacity mm -hmm. of uh, one, 100.78, that is having removed the auxiliary loads that are consumed by the auxiliary equipment within the plant. Okay. Yeah. Do, do, you, do you have to shut it down or you run now on 24 hour basis? Um, as is the case for geothermal plants, we are base load, so we run 24 hours uh, at maximum load. And uh, we rarely get uh, dispatch issues where we have to, to, to bring our load down. A little bit of the power that we utilize here, rather than stepping it up, we actually step it down from 11,000 volts to 3,300, 415, and uh, 240 for our own auxiliary consumptions within the station.